This is a, a table of DTFT pairs and properties. And again, you'll have it for all of your, uh, for your next test and for your final exam. This DTFT pairs looks an awful lot like what you did in, in uh, signals and systems, except that you see these, these uh, summations in the frequency domain. And these crazy summations are just a reflection of the fact that although we only are interested in our DTFT between omega equals zero and pi, where it's unique, it actually exists over all omega. So these things carry on those reflections that we're talking about. And then we've got these DTFT properties. So linearity looks an awful lot like what we talked about in continuous time. If you know the DTFT of, of, of one input signal, X of N, you find it right up here. And you know the input signal of another input function, then the DTFT is just the scaled sum of, of both of them. Time shifting uh, works exactly like it did in, in continuous time too. If you time shift your input by say three to make it later by three, it does not change your DTFT at all except by multiplying it by this e to the minus j omega three. And let me explain a little bit about what this means intuitively. So you've got a signal coming in, an X of N, and your particular X of N, let's say it's, there we go. Let's say it's um, a signal that's composed primarily of high frequencies. You've delayed it by three units. It's still a signal composed primarily of high frequencies. So you would expect the magnitude of its DTFT to remain unchanged and still show very little low frequencies and lots of high frequencies. Well, if you take the magnitude of this, that's exactly what you'll find. The magnitude of this guy of a pure complex exponential is always one. I'll give it as an example, delaying it by three, and that has a DTFT. So here's our time domain and here's our frequency domain, capital X of E to the J omega. And that has, a, has its transform of this. So if you're interested in finding the, if you wanted to graph that as a magnitude, you would graph the magnitude of the entire thing. And by the rules of taking magnitude, the magnitude, the rules for taking the magnitude of, the, of a product of two things is equal to the magnitude of the first times the magnitude of the second. Of course, that also works for a division. does not work for addition or subtraction. For angles, you'll remember that's the sum of the two angles. And similarly, if you're dividing, it would be the difference of the two angles. So let me put that away as a little math aside. So this thing is equal to the magnitude of e to the minus j omega three times the magnitude of x of e to the j omega. But now, what's the angle of this thing? You can write this in complex exponential form. Let's call it, I'll put a, uh, uh, a real number out here. So c is real and omega is real, and this whole thing is a complex number. And in polar notation, it's just that. On the complex plane, real part, imaginary part, this is a circle. It's C units from the, from the origin, from the center, and omega is its angle with respect to the real axis. So this is the, this is what C e to the j omega looks like. So if you wanted to, you could divide it up into a cosine part, into a real part, which would be C cosine of omega, and an imaginary part, which would be uh, plus j sine of omega. But, what it, but when I see this, I actually picture this in the complex plane. So given that, what is the magnitude of e to the minus j omega three? It's just one, because there's, no there's no C out here.
So it's just one times the magnitude of the original DTFT. And that intuitively makes sense. Delaying something in time shouldn't change it. If, it's a, if it was once a high frequency containing signal, it's still a high frequency containing signal. All that's changed are the relative phases inside that signal. Back to our DTFT tables. Uh, frequency shift doesn't happen very often because we're <laughs> the frequency shift is actually multiplying it by in the time domain by a complex exponential. But what we see if you multiply a number a sequence in the time domain by a complex exponential, it just shifts things in the frequency domain. Just like shifting in the time domain does the opposite. It multiplies a complex exponential in the frequency domain. You're not going to see frequency shifts at an undergraduate level course, because that would mean that your time domain signal is complex, and that's not a signal we're very interested in handling. Okay, so there's the, what happens when you take the derivative in the frequency domain, and it's like multiplying by negative Jn in the time domain. Not all that useful. Convolution is really useful. So when you convolve in the time domain, that's the same thing as multiplying in the frequency domain. We use that all the time. I just gave an example of um, I just gave an example of that over over here in response to Fawaz's question, and the opposite is also true. If you multiply multiplication goes to I'm sorry multiplication goes to convolution, and multiplication here goes to convolution in the frequency domain. It's a this, you'll have, just have to trust me that this, is, that this is convolution in the frequency domain. We don't use convolution in the frequency domain with DTFTs much at all. The ones to know here are convolution, uh, time shifting, and linearity.